five cast ons for the beginner. Today's lesson nine of how to knit for beginner series. We are working on cast ons. You have learned already how to do the long tail cast on. We're going to bring in a second color plus a little hack for you as well as uh, work the thumb cast on the cable and the knit cast ons. We also have bonuses of working uh, this edge here, which is part of the long tail or doing a two or three color that looks like a braid. So those will be at the end, but also we're gonna break down the stitches and you're going to see which part of the um, the thumb and finger happen when the, you're doing a long tail cast on as well as working uh, color and deciding which part to change uh, when you're working color on your cast ons. All right, let's begin. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. As always, before you begin, I want to point out to click down in the link below to go to blog for more information and to see this written out. You can also see the timestamps to jump directly to the part of the cast on that you wanna see. So if you want the long tail, the long tail with two colors, if you want the thumb, the cable, or the knitting cast ons, you'll see those little timestamps below. Just click and it'll jump to it or select along uh, the bottom of the screen here for the chapter and it will go directly to it. We'll also have these added features here and uh, you'll see those descriptions down below that I will let you uh, link in and see those specific spots. All right, so let's jump right in to the long tail cast on. The long tail cast on that we've been working with in this series, it has a nice tidy edge to it. It has an elastic edge to it. It works great for many projects and is very popular around the world. This method can vary, but the slingshot method is very popular. You can hold it lots of different ways. I'm going to show you as a reminder, but before we start, I want to point out the parts of it. So you can see how we have two colors on here, and I'm not teaching two color at this moment, but you'll get a clue as to how to do that right now, because when you hold it in your hand, it's going to be on the opposite side though. But when you hold it in your hand, the thumb yarn is actually what's making this really pretty edge here. And what's held, held on the finger or the index yarn is actually making this line right here, which looks like a knit stitch when I continue on and stock in them. But if I continue knitting on the next row, after it will purl on this side of the work. So when I work it in here, it has this knit stitch. But when I work it on the wrong side, if I work a knit stitch, it would cover up this part and you would see um, you would see a purl stitch cover on the top of it. Let me show you on the sample here. If you can see I'm working a knit stitch on the next row and here I'm working two colors together. And then you can see as I work my knit stitch when it's turned over on the side, which looks like a knit stitch in my white, it has a little blip of color on this side. And you can see where it makes a purl here on the right side. But on the wrong side, it looks like a knit. Uh, but to look at the green, there's that little blip there. Okay, so the white that's shining through. So if you go underneath, you can see the little strands of the V-stitch. Yeah, here it is. Here's the V. Okay, then the white kind of peeks through around the side of it. It's got a little scarf on it. <laughs> it's got, now it's got a scarf of green here, and this one has a scarf of the white. So that's how that breaks down. So let's go ahead and do the knit stitch again, and you can see how that's worked and then we can go to the ins and outs of color changing towards the end of the video, but I do want to get all the stitches. So how we begin on a long tail is that you start with your slip knot, or you can go without. So how we begin on the long tail, we pull out three times the width that we need, okay, one, two, three, plus leaving a little bit of a tail. Make your slip knot however you like, and then place it on your needle. Okay, and then we're going to grab our yarn, and you have the ball part, and it's going to be on your index finger, and then we have this tail part, which is going to be on our thumbs. So we grab it in our hand, we split it with our finger and our thumb, and then holding on to this stitches on top here, and we scoop up over the thumb, and go down at the finger, and down with the thumb, and let it go. Okay, so let's do that slower here. Okay, so we pull back, we go up, 
through the middle of the stitch here, okay, up uh, the thumb, go around to the middle of the stitch at the middle finger or the <laughs> this finger, and then pull it back down where the thumb area is. Okay, and that put that stitch up on top and then pull it up at the thumb. And then you come over here. Now you can see why the bottom of this part has that little pretty edge here, right? Okay, so we're gonna continue on. Keep doing a few more. Keep doing a few more. Now you can also make a purl stitch with a long tail. I'm not gonna get terribly long into this because uh, we can have a separate video that's just a purl cast on, but if you wanted to cast on a pattern and say you're working on ribbing, you can actually do it with this. So let's hold this, pull it back, and you go around this on this index finger side. We're gonna go up underneath the index on this side of it, okay, up through underneath, and then go around this part here on the thumb, okay, so it's the same side, and then push it through this opening. Okay, we're gonna push it through, so grab it, and then push it through, and then let go, like that. So, for the pearl, you're gonna scoop up, so we're going around and up through the index finger, around and up through the thumb, and then push it back through the index finger, and then tighten that up. So that's how you would do the long tail purl. If we do a knit again, we're gonna to the side of the thumb up under, and then we actually go down here through the middle of our index finger, and then we're pushing it through the thumb area again, and then let it go. Okay, so that's how we do the long tail cast on. Two color long tail cast on, you can do with one strand of this yarn to make this nice delicate edge, or you can use something like this. And here's that little bonus I was talking about. You can work with two strands and it will make it bulkier. Now when I rotate this, you can see this little blip of color from the back. So if I lay this down, sometimes you can see the white kind of pinking through. So if you want a more substantial look to it, you, depending upon the weight of your yarn, I'm working with a super bulky weight here, but uh, so it wouldn't be as heavy on say a four weight yarn or something. But right here, you're actually seeing me work with two strands at the same time held together as my color or my accent color here. So the way you do this is to grab your strands if you want to bulk up on the extra strand of this color here, you're just going to have to cut triple times the width of the uh, the project you want, and then go ahead and cut that yarn, and then hold those two together. But you're just going to go ahead and grab your yarn, your two colors, put these two together. Uh, you're going to make your slip knot. Okay. And then place it on your needle. Okay. The way that I hold these is what go determines what goes where. So if I grab them and I put my green yarn on my thumb and work with the white yarn on my finger, I'm going to make a long tail cast on with the pretty edge as green. Okay, like that. But if I take those off and I flip it and I put the white on my thumb and the green on my finger, I come up here and pull with a thumb yarn of the white and I go down at the green at my index finger and pull down again and I have the white on the bottom pretty edge here and I keep going just like that. And so when you begin your next color, the next row, you have to decide which one you want to do. So if I want that pretty edge in white and start with green, then when I start my next row, I will pick up, I can pick up my white again, or I can pick up my green. Let's pick up my green, but I want to pick it up and go underneath, okay? I'm trying to trap that in, the other color, and then work with my green like this. Okay. And when I turn it over, actually when I get to the end, I can actually drop that slip knot on here and pull that out. So when you cast on, just cast on one extra stitch or just look at it and don't count this 
slip knot and then when you pull this around you won't have that really big stitch hanging on there and it'll just look nice and pretty and then the rest of it would be the uh, worked in the green color so that is my two color cast on and of course you can hold two strands together to make the nice um, bulkier edge like what I did right here okay so if you watch the two color cast on you saw that we worked with two different strands and began immediately from our slip knot did you catch my tip so I had a knitting hack in there. If you take your ball of yarn, say I am gonna work with this one right here, I can actually start with one strand from the beginning of the yarn that's coming from the middle here, and then one strand from the outside. So one from the inside and one from the out, and begin working. And then when I wanna start working with my main knitting, I can just drop the strand that I don't wanna work with anymore. And I just go ahead and cut a tail and continue pulling from the center or the outside and it, you can also work with two balls and begin by grabbing the ends of both of those especially if they're same color and then drop the one you want to finish uh, working with for the main project and then cut that off and then just continue so that's a quick knitting hack you can uh, do working the same color if you don't want to measure it out in advance all right so this is the thumb cast on and you can see my edge here it does have a sort of nice long strand in the front but you can see it's a little bit more inconsistent. Now, generally when I do it, it's a lot more consistent from my own experience, but I try to make it a little bit wrong. <laughs> so I've just gotten lots of practice. So if you've used this as a beginner knitter alternative and didn't want to do the long tail, you may have noticed that these for you are a little bit long and loopy or loose. And that's just due to the nature of how it comes on the needle like this strand is just really loopy it just doesn't look as tidy as say something like this which is a long tail just something more consistent and then this other one's just sort of out of whack it's also a really handy one to know the thumb cast on say if you want to make a buttonhole here's a sample where i actually worked a long tail cast on and then i bound off like five stitches here and then it came back on the next row and added with the thumb cast on and we've got our stitches back going and continue on our work so it's a really handy one to know so let's do this one now okay just take your yarn you can make your slip knot place it on your needle okay and then you're just gonna hold out your yarn here and then put your thumb down and then twist around and place it on the needle okay so let's do that again slower put our thumb down pull it down and around towards your body and then up and then away from your body and then it's parallel with the needle so just scoop it up with the needle and place it there do that again thumb down bring it down twist around and then scoop it up and place it on the needle and I suggest keeping your finger to make sure you are placing these, uh, spacing these out accordingly. If you really get them on really tight, hold them tight here, your cast on is going to be too short or not wide enough and tight. And if you make them really long, it's gonna be kind of loopy when you first start your knitting like this. And you're just kind of inconsistent about it. When you knit, you're gonna have this really loopy edge because all these stitches are really loose and can can inconsistent you get a bit of sort of this look here okay but with practice you can actually be very tidy with it i don't want to ever discount people who only use the thumb cast on it's okay so that's how to make that one let's do the next one well this is one of my favorite cast ons for beginners because it reinforces the knit stitch this is the knitted cast on it does have a bit of a looser edge here but it does have a uh, tidier look to it than the thumb cast on but you do have to get some practice at it i just like how you actually um, learn the knit stitch when you begin this one so it's great for beginners it just reinforces those knitting habits all right so i'm going to show you how to make this I do want you to see the comparison to the long tail so you can see the long tail is nice and tidy but the knit can be kind of loose and this is a bit flatter here than say this one here long tail which kind of matches the thickness of the rest of your knitting so that's a good little comparison there now let's make the knitted cast on okay we're gonna get our yarn we're gonna just start with the slip knot you don't have to measure out any yarn 
So just make your slip knot, place it onto your needle, and we're just going to jump right in with our next needle into this first stitch and put it down toward the end so I can get it in there. And we're just gonna start knitting, right? So we're just gonna put our needle in that hole there, the slip knot, yarn over, and you're gonna pull it through, just like a knit stitch, but here's where it changes. We're going to pull it out and twist it. We're gonna twist this needle here and put it into the other side of the stitch that we just made. And now we're gonna pull out that needle and tighten up here on this, this needle over here. Okay, so it's tight now. So now we're gonna go into the new stitch that we made. So when go in there, just like you're gonna knit, yarn over, pull through that knit stitch, and instead of dropping it off like a knit stitch would do, or moving it like this one over, we're just going to twist it around, put this tip into the back of the stitch that we just created, and let it go back on here. So we're just setting it up in a different way. So we're knitting the stitch, pulling it through, twisting it, and then we're just putting it on the needle again. So, okay, so we're just twisting it around. You can make it really big if you need to, and then just place it right on top of your needle. All right, so let's do that again. Needle in, yarn over, pull that loop through, twist it around, and place it onto your needle. There we go. So the tip here is to be kind of loose with your knit stitches and make sure you're not tightening too much in between, pulling it out too tight. Uh, so when I place it on here, we don't want to have it super loose, but we do want to make it a little bit snugger. We just don't tighten it like this. If you tighten it like that, your next row is going to be really hard to work because your stitches are just not going to be uh, loose enough. Okay, so that's it there. So if you're knitting along and you make it, um, make your stitches, let's just do a row here. Uh, make your stitches. You've got some knitting and your pattern says to add some stitches at the beginning of your row, right? You're starting your row and it says add some stitches. It says add three or four. You can add, actually add to your pattern or your knitting this particular stitch cast on. So the knitted cast on can do it here. Just again, go in, twist it around, um, place it. And now you've extended your knitting, you've made it wider, and you can do that every row as you turn, and it just makes it wider and wider. So that's that cool extra thing you can do. So now let's jump to the cable cast on, and you can see sort of its bigger sister. Okay, the cable cast on is quite pretty. It has this sort of cabled look to it, almost like a little rope or cable. Now it's going to be more delicate when you use a smaller weight yarn, I'm using this super bulky weight yarn. This is a Bernat a Softy Chunky that we've used before. Now it's going to be more delicate again if you use a four weight yarn or smaller, uh, but all you're doing here is stepping up your game. It's sort of like the sister stitch to the knitted one, a bigger sister, the knitted cast on. There are a couple of different ways to do the cable cast on. This is just the way that I do it. So let's begin with a slip knot. Same thing, you only need the tail. And we're gonna go right into this first stitch here as we did before on the knitted cast on. Okay, we're going to make a knitted cast on just for the first stitch. Well, technically the second stitch as we have the slip knot as the first. And then when you make the knitted cast on stitch just like before, Okay, if you missed that before, you had a slip knot, you go into that stitch, you knit the stitch, pull it through, and then you just twist the stitch and put it back on the needle in the twisted position. Now this is important, I don't pull on that strand, okay? We're going to leave that nice and loose. We're going to place our needle in between these stitches. We're just gonna go right in between number one and two. Okay, let's pull in right here, so sorry, over like a horseshoe. It goes all the way around, you can see it, it's just kind of stuck on here, it's not moving or anything. We're going to use our working yarn and we're going to knit that stitch. So yarn over 
and we're gonna pull that on through. Now this is going to be a little bit tight, especially if you were too tight with it before. You're just gonna pull it on through to create a new loop. Now it's the same as the knitted cast on, we're gonna pull it out and twist it and place it back on, uh, twisting and placing and leaving it nice and loose. So that when you do the next stitch, you can do the same thing. Again, you go in between those stitches, one you just created in previous, go in there, and then you just pull over through the stitch. I usually let my finger kind of help guide me through and then pull it out, twist it, and place it. Okay, so the other side is like this, looks like this, and this is the side we're working with. So let's do a few more. If it's too loose, too tight, you just pull it out a little bit, go in, make your knit stitch, twist it, and place it and keep going, okay? Okay. So you can see after several stitches, it begins to have this cool little rope braid look to it, right? Obviously this is all one strand, it's all one color. We're not doing a two strand on here at all, just one strand. It has this sort of ropey looking braid. It's really nice and fun, different. Just remember that when you work this stitch here, when you work the very first row, the first row is going to be your right side uh, on this same cable side. It's the same thing for the knitted one. You're going to work your right side as to which stitch you want to appear on the right of your work. If you want to have a knit stitch or a purl stitch to begin, you just make that choice. This one I just started my stitch uh, stitches and then I did, a, I did a knit stitch. So I could have had a purl stitch at the very beginning of it and it would have this ridge lower. Then I would have to purl all of my stitches to make this garter stitch look, which I don't want to do that. I just wanted to do them all knit stitch. So for instance, here, let me just get it knit across. I'm just gonna knit a few more and turn. I just want you to see how this works up naturally. And we'll do another row. So that was row one. I'm working row two. Let's turn okay. around and there you have it. We have a braided edge, that cabled edge. We have a row one and you can see row two is actually placing that little pearl bump on top of row one. And this little part down here is actually part of our cast on. Your cast on is actually this edge and this little knit stitch here, okay? So that's cast on and your row one is actually here and then row two is actually this pearl bump here, this little scarf on row one. So uh, I hope that helps you. So let's chat for the rest of this about color and where to start with your knit stitches and purl stitches and if you want your color to show through um, when you're working. So right here, you can see where I've done the two color cast on and then I began my next row by way, by the way, my color, my cast on, it starts here and then works over here. And then when I want the rows of white, I flipped on the other side and I have to begin my white color. So I made my white as my color that was on my index finger so that when I began, it didn't have any color change, like blip through or show through. So that particular row or that particular bump jumps through here and it doesn't blip through. Let's look at my other sample over here. Okay, so this one, what I did is I held two colors I'm sorry, I held the green together and I did my cast on in totally green, but then I switched on my first row to white. And when I knit on the other side, it blips through the white here because it's actually a pearl, right? So when you're seeing through, you see this green here, that's part of the cast on, right? So that's the top part of this stitch here, that V stitch, the knit of the cast on. Okay, so in order to get this to look uh, down this way, you actually have to begin row one with a purl stitch. Okay, and then because 
uh, if you knit it, it will do this. So I began after I did about five stitches here, I did a purl across this way. And then when I did my right side, I began this part right here, demonstrating if I just knit on the right side here, and then I get stuck in it over here, the next five stitches, if I decide after I've done that purling across here on the other side, then I start alternating and doing knit rows all the time. And I'm just um, knitting the right side and the wrong side. So uh, for a garter stitch. So if you want your color kind of shoved down at the bottom here, you can choose to what I did here, which is just hold one strand of your little accent color choice and then do the main color so it sort of moves down here. So you have to kind of play with it to get an understanding of what I'm talking about. And uh, this one's kind of cool because you can say you look at this one and you say, that's kind of cool, but I don't like seeing that white kind of blip through. All right, let's try this. So what I did is when I made a stripe one, I just held these two stitches together, two greens, and we did talk about that one in the two color version. So jump back to that if you need a refresher, but I'm basically holding stitches like this. And I'm just working my thumbs to just hold these two colors together, the green, like two strands at the same time, and only one strand of the white. And then when I start working on my first row, okay, well, it's already in white so the color doesn't translate through like this one doesn't show through does that make sense and then whenever you're on the right side this is just a quick color suggestion when you change colors we haven't done this in series yet but if you want to change colors you just change on the right side row on a knit row so this green uh, started when i came on the right side here so this particular row uh, but if you're on the wrong side and you want to change it then you would actually have to uh, purl to get it to look right on the right side. But we'll approach that on another uh, video. So that just gives you a good overview. If you wanted something like this, if you've been holding out one tin and oh, Kristen, how did you get this braided edge? <laughs> what did you do? Okay, it's the same thing I talked about holding two strands together on your thumb and one on your index, just a little tweak. But in this case, we did is we held my main color of yarn on my index finger, and then I held my accent color and my main color together on my thumb. And then I just kind of switched through. When I started working, I only pick up one at a time and work that one, and then the next time I twist them and work another one. So as a bonus, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do this version right now. So to do a two color or a three color braided cast on, you need to just have some extra yarn in your main color. If you're doing the two color cast on, or you can work with all three colors and don't worry about having the extra yarn. So I'm explaining it two ways, but right here I mainly wanna explain it as what I had knitted. So let's just say that color A is the main color and that's the green, and then color B is my accent and that's a white here. So if you wanna do three colors, you're just gonna say I've got color B and then C would be that extra main color here. So uh, that's how I'm gonna do it. So let's come down here and get our yarn. We needed about three times the width of our um, fabric for color A for this example uh, with the two color version, but you don't need the extra again if you're doing the three color version. So I've already cut my yarn, got it ready. Got that here, and then I'm gonna work with my secondary color B, and then I'm gonna bring my ball yarn here, which is A. Okay, so I've got A and B attached to a ball, and then this is my extra um, yarn here. We're gonna take all three together, make a tail, put in a slip knot. This slip knot is not gonna count, because you can see how big and bulky and really ugly this is. So we're gonna take that out later. We're gonna put this on our needle. <clears throat> Don't worry about this tail. Okay, we're gonna hold on this in a particular way. I'm gonna put this aside. Okay, so I'm gonna hold my main color up on my finger, and then I'm gonna grab the other two onto my thumb. So same as before, we're gonna split the yarn. So we have two colors down here on the thumb. All right, so I'm going to work at the first color, which I think I'm gonna have it green, which is the main color. So I'm gonna scoop under where the green is and come down at the finger and then down to the thumb. 
and let go like this. And then I'm gonna go to my white. So what I do is I'm going to drop it and I'm gonna pick up my white, but I make sure it's overlapping that green. So now I'm only holding the white on my thumb and go through up the white at the thumb, down at the green, and then down the white again, and then let it go. Okay, so you see that little color pop through? Now let's do that again. We're gonna drop the white, we're gonna grab the green. Okay, so when we scoop up at that green, we're gonna go down with the other green on the index finger, and then go down again, and you're gonna pull up this yarn, and then you can pull on this white to make it consistent. So just keep in mind in your head where this yarn is coming from. Back here, attached to the stitch, that's just going on your index, and then you can pick up the next color that you want. So I'll work with the green last, so I want to work with the white again. You can just hold on it, give it some tension on here with this other yarn. You'll get better at that, and the one you're, where you're not working with. And go up into the white, down with the green, and then down with that white again, and let go. Let's do that again. I'm holding on still with the green here, my finger, and I'm going to go with the thumb, the green down here, and here we go. Go up at the thumb, down with the finger, down with the thumb again, and let go. There's that white again. So we're going to go with our thumb here. Okay, make sure we got that right. And we're gonna go the thumb, with the finger, and kind of fix it if it gets a little twisty. Just pull slightly, not too much. You can see this braid is happening, and the stitches are going along the edge. And when you start working on your right side row, you're gonna turn around and start doing it. So if I had started with my green as my first color, let's end it with that. Let's see, you've got the back, if you could just look at it and see what's coming off the back of this stitch, that's my index finger. Let's go through and do the green again. Okay, here we go. Up at the thumb, down with the finger, down with the thumb, and go. All right, so that's our last stitch here, and you can go ahead and drop this one off. Okay, just slide it down, and undo the slip knot, not like that. So now it's just the, got this pretty edge. This is beginning and ending with the green or get the stitch count you need for your project. Now we're gonna turn it over and you notice that it's not the pretty braid. So when you begin, you need to be on the wrong side row. If your pattern begins on a right side row, then you can do that, uh, but I would maybe have an extra row to work uh, to accommodate this pretty braid here. So I would grab my other needle, go ahead and work my first stitch. So if we're doing garter stitch, I would just immediately begin knitting and it will look like this. And if I want a stockinette for the main front side, let's go ahead and we're gonna purl across I'll show you what that looks like. There we go. So that is what that looks like if you started with the stockinette. Still a nice, very lovely braided edge. I hope you enjoy learning about all of our cast-ons today with uh, our five main cast-ons, and then I gave you some extra bonuses that we worked as well. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll catch you on our next knitting lesson. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.